Okay, this is the best iPadOS 17 feature I've found so far. We can finally multitask properly and fluidly on the iPad. Check this out. This is me connecting the M1 iPad Pro to an external 4K monitor. Did you just notice how quick that was? And here you can see I'm disconnecting from that monitor and connecting to a completely different monitor and a different resolution and aspect ratio. And it just works without any problems. I mean, that's really impressive. And I don't know what else I can throw at this to make it break. But I was just thinking, there's no way this is gonna work on an 8K display, right? <laughs> Holy sh... Resizing Windows doesn't feel restrictive anymore. I'm still not 100% happy with the grouping of apps and the stage manager UI, but I can totally live with that now. Roll the intro. There's no intro, we don't waste people's time. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. Credit where is due, I've been very vocal about the iPad Pro and iPadOS recently. When iPadOS 16 came out last year, I was enraged at how bad the experience was and the lack of multitasking abilities. And I'll be honest with you, I have since been having a great time here with my Tab S8 Ultra and Samsung DeX, you know, for getting work done during the day, my nine to five stuff, kind of admin work and stuff like that, the Tab S8 Ultra has been fantastic. And the only times when I use the iPad is actually being the iPad Air, not the Pro, for watching things like YouTube and Netflix. You may remember that I've returned the M2 iPad Pro and I did not even recommend it because I honestly thought it was a waste of money for most people. But I have to acknowledge what Apple is doing now with the iPad software. Sure, iPadOS 17 looks like a much more improved version. I mean, lots of new features here, but have they done enough to make me consider using the iPad Pro again? For a bit of context, this is a very early beta version that I'm reviewing here. Like I did last year, I will share feedback as the beta versions come out, and then of course, after the final release. So I'm 100% looking past crashes and some bugs that I'm seeing right now. And of course, I am reporting them as well so developers can see what's happening. That said, when I look at the features that I consider really important, I can see some really good improvements here. The iPad Pro is one of my favorite Apple products ever. And I've been feeling really let down since April 2021, I think it was when they announced, you know, the M1 iPad Pro, you know, it's an amazing piece of hardware, but they announced it with very little change from a software perspective. And frankly, in my opinion, they've been limiting what the hardware can do to protect MacBook sales. As probably one of the most successful businesses out there, right? And as far as profit goes, you can't really blame them for that. But as a consumer, I'd like to feel that I'm getting value for money. It's always hard to compare really because Samsung laptops are not as popular as MacBooks, but I love what Samsung have done with their tablets and how they pack so much into it. It really feels like you're getting good value for money. iPadOS 17 has a lot more features in it now that really take advantage of the hardware. And I really appreciate Apple doing that. I'll show you this in a little bit more detail, but I'm actually surprised at how much you can do on the iPad now. Some of these features can be seen as quite small improvements when you look at them individually, but when you group them together, you know, these are the little things that for me is what was needed to make the iPad more useful. I'm not saying the iPad Pro with the iPad OS 17 is perfect now, but thank goodness it's about time, right? That we can use the iPad Pro, you know, in a much more efficient way. Later on in the video, I'll talk about some of the features that I still think are needed, but let's take a look in more detail on the improvements that are being made. Starting with connecting the iPad Pro to an external monitor. If you know the channel, you know that this has been such a problem for me. I know this was already working on iPad OS 16, but this feels quick now and really resembled connecting the Mac to a display. It's just boom, you know, it works. No flickering, no readjusting of the resolution. It just, you know, it just works. I tested this with many different displays and I'm really pleased to see this working without any hiccups. Even on a gaming monitor, I was like, come on, this is not never gonna work. Plugged it in and I was like, I had to do a double take to go, there's no way this is working, but it is. And I'm really happy for that. Now, this blew my mind. You can now connect an external camera, not just like a webcam, but even professional cameras, like a DSLR camera, this is huge. You know, it's a game changer for me, for a lot of people who want to use the iPad for work. For the last couple of years, right, work is more and more about having meeting, you know, meetings online. I use this amazing 4K camera here from Insta360. It's very portable and it's, you know, the quality, whenever I use people are like, oh my God, the camera quality is incredible. Now, when you join those two things together, the iPad and something like this, there will be days when I really do not need to carry a laptop with me. I can just take the iPad and this camera in my bag and I can sit anywhere and have a professional meeting with someone from a cafe, right? And that is the power of the iPad. That is what I've been waiting for. It's unlocking the potential for this form factor, but there's more. If you do something like live streaming, it looks like when the software is a bit more polished, to be fair, right? That we are gonna be able to even use multiple cameras. I'm, I'm like, this is amazing. I tried this in my live stream setup here. Let's just take a look at it. 
I'm able to connect multiple 4K cameras and a microphone into the switch here. This is the Atom Mini from Blackmagic Design, just using the audio and HDMI input. Then I connect the switcher itself to the iPad via USB-C. That's it. You can then select the switcher as the camera and the microphone using something like StreamYard or whatever. And there you have it, multiple cameras and professional microphones into the iPad. If you're doing podcasts or even doing work meetings, there's just so much you can do here now. You know, you can have a camera pointing at a whiteboard, another one at yourself, you could be streaming your gaming. I'm really excited about this. Right now, it does feel a little bit clunky and I'm sure it's not just Apple that needs to update the OS. Uh, the third party apps will probably need to do their, you know, their work as well on their side. But this is really promising and it doesn't stop there. And before I forget, this YouTube business is really, really tricky. I'm working over the weekend here in late hours to get content out to you. So a quick reminder to like this video if you're enjoying it, of course. And after this video, have a look at the channel. And if you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed. I'm here at least once a week with a down to earth tech video for you. Apple is finally giving us more control over the lock screen on the iPad. Again, you know, it's about time, right? On iPad OS 17, you can really personalize it now. And you know, as much as I think that the switches could, could have been here years ago, they did a really nice job here on the UI. You know, it's really satisfying actually to use it. We can get motion effects and live photos. We can get live activities here, like following up on your food orders or your flight status, live sports updates, you know, your timers, really cool stuff. And I don't know if you've had a chance to catch up on Apple's uh, WWDC event, but in there they showed a lot of focus on widgets, not just on iPad OS, but iOS as well. So widgets eh, are everywhere and I and watch OS as well. Don't mind me, two watches. I'll explain that in my next video. We've had this sort of stuff on Android for years, I know, but hey, welcome to the 21st century Apple. I just think it's really positive to see this. iMessage looks really nice and polished as well. The jury is out on this iMessage apps here, and it's gonna take some time for me to test them because I don't have an iPhone anymore. Well, I do, but I only use it for syncing it with my watch. I don't really use it as my main phone, but on the surface, it looks really nice and polished. It's really cool how we can create and add our own stickers now, not just on iMessage, but all over the place. This is really looking like a lot of fun. FaceTime also had a facelift. And with the camera ability that I mentioned earlier, you can have really high quality calls now if you want to using a webcam like I showed or a professional camera. From my perspective, not much more is needed now, but there are a couple of things that they need to do, I think. The new apps that they released like Final Cut and Logic, especially Final Cut, could be less limiting it. Again, overall, I'm happy with how they made their way into the iPad, but despite all the fluffiness that's out there, I did try this myself and I wasn't really confident that I could use it professionally. There are a couple of major features like allowing external storage on Final Cut, but overall, I'm happy that these apps are now available on the iPad and hopefully they can only get better, right? Lots more to test and I'll keep you updated on that. And while you wait for that update, why not check this video over here or maybe this one over here. See you soon. Yeah.